What's up, everybody? Paul here from the Hoops Crew, and today we are taking a deeper dive into Geelong's activity around the upcoming draft period. Now, of course, there's a video that went live. In fact, this is the second time that I've recorded this one because there was some news that broke in and around the time that I actually put the last video together and I wasn't aware of it in that very moment. And so I encourage people to go and check out the video that I published yesterday dedicated to Alex uh, Dodson who is a player that the Cats have been considering as a South Australian ruckman. The Cats have been uh, showing a little bit of interest in over the course of the last couple of weeks. And it's kind of led to this particular point where, well, it it was a bit of a span in the mix when it comes to my various different predictions. I, I wasn't really banking on us showing interest in a ruckman, but it turns out we are. And it could also be a case of Geelong, like any other AFL club, doing their due diligence. And maybe this amounts to nothing. But There is a bit of talk about Geelong chasing him in the first round of the draft, or at least kind of night one, early night two. And so I definitely encourage people to go and check out that video. But today we're going to dive a little bit deeper and check out, um, I guess, some bigger picture predictions for Geelong in this upcoming AFL draft period. Because I've certainly got some theories as to, I guess, how we need to be picking and choosing the types of players, what sorts of players, what positions do we need to address, what gaps are going to emerge over the course of the next couple of years, and what we need to do to address those. So we're going to dive into all of those things, and and we're going to get pretty pretty in the weeds with the whole thing. Really, it's I'm hoping that you know we'll get lots of comments in the in the chat here afterwards, and people will kind of share their ideas as to what Geelong needs to do ahead of their first selection, either on Wednesday night or Thursday night. But before we get to any of that, a word from our sponsor. The Hoops Crew Media Network is proudly sponsored by Cyril Cook Florist, established in Geelong since 1915. Visit their website at www.cyrilcookflorist.com.au. That's Cook with an E. Give them a call on 035 222 or mention the Hoops Crew to get yourself 20% off your next in-store purchase when you visit them at Shop 12, 11 Leather Street in Breakward. Thank you, Cyril Cook Florist, as always, for your continued support. Now, let's pick through some of the, the movements, the potential movements for the Geelong Football Club going into this draft period. And it's a really fascinating one when you, when you factor in the complexion of our list. Now... This is still fairly out of date, and I'm not sure exactly when they plan on updating it, but of course, there'll be some notable players that are still on this list here. Zach Tui, Brandon Parfitt, Tom Hawkins is in here, uh, Gary Rowan's in here. There's a, there's a range of players that are that are no longer with the Cats for a variety of reasons, um, and you know, new faces, obviously, such as Bailey Smith, Jack Martin. We've had Irish imports again. We're doing some incredible things. And, you know, it wasn't the right time for me personally to kind of uh, get on and record something uh, when that news broke. But it's it's a, it's amazing that we're continuing to make these pursuits into the Irish region and we're taking we're pillaging some of the best talent from their great game and bringing them over here. And we've had some incredible success. We've had a few premiership players in recent years, obviously in, in Zach Tui and Mark O'Connor. And, you know, we've, we've got... Who knows? The, the sky is really the limit, I think, with with some of these players. Just the, there's so much raw talent, and you know, you never really. It's worth it. I think it's worth it, especially when you when you bring them in as as round B rookies. But because of the various D listings, we've got some spots available on the list. And if we kind of quickly look through it, we're losing Zach. Uh, we're losing Zach Tui. We've lost. Uh, sorry, we've lost Zach Tui. We've lost Brandon Parfit. We've lost Tom Hawkins. Um, where are we? Where are we? Where are we? I'm looking to skim through as we as we go here. Uh, we've lost Phoenix Foster. We've lost James Willis. We've lost Gary Rowan. We've lost uh, Tom Hawkins. And, and you know the, the list continues. Oscar, Oscar Murdoch is gone. Um, obviously, there's O'Shea Mullen in terms of the Irish representation. I was talking about before. Joe Furphy was a, a you know a bit of a speculative pick as a rookie in terms of a developing ruckman. I'm surprised that we didn't stick with him, but he's gone as well. Um, Mitch Hardy's gone. Uh, you know we. Uh, Emerson Jack has gone. We cut quite hard through this last off-season period. And so we've got a fair few gaps to fill. And we've addressed some of them, as I outlined before, but there's a range of others that we need to pick. Now, when I look at our our you know our team at the moment, factoring in the additions that we've had. So we've had, you know, when we think about Jack Martin, we've we've brought in another small forward now. We're pretty well blessed with uh, some incredible small forwards from, you know, we had Jack Martin. 
to the long, to the likes of Tyson Stengel, Brian Myers, Brad Close, Ollie Dempsey. The list goes on and on and on. We've got so many incredible players that that play through that part of the field of of all sorts of levels of experience. And um, I think you know, in that regard, we're doing fine. There's been a lot said about Geelong's midfield over the course of the season, and. I mean, you know, it was a bit of a worry for a while there, but what I think was often forgotten is that there was there was injuries underpinning that. Cam Guthrie was basically written off for the majority of the season in the end and really didn't stand a chance until the absolute final moments of the season and and a loss in the VFL uh, semi didn't really help him in that particular case. Um, but we were missing Tanner Brewer and we were missing Paddy Dangefield at different stages. There was, there was some consistency issues there and then we go and add Bailey Smith into the mix. I think our midfield's looking pretty good let alone the fact, and I'll you know I'll scroll through the list here to further highlight it, the the youth that is coming through in the midfield that is showing bucket loads of potential should mean that I think as Cats fans, we should be feeling pretty content with where the midfield is. Do we have someone on the really young side? And maybe arguably Bay Smith fits into this, and so the answer is yes. But do we have someone that is, you know, that brown low winner in the midfield? Maybe not. I mean, sorry, Paddy Dangerfield is. He's won one. But in terms of that youth that's coming through, can, can Tanner Bruin win a Brownlow? Well, maybe, maybe not. Can Jai Clark win one? No, probably not. Like, can George Stevens? Probably not. But if you look at these players, you know, we're not we're not in it for Brownlows. We're not talking about Brownlow medals. We're talking about players who can come in, play their role to an incredibly high standard and take us to the promised land once again. And when I think about these guys that are coming through, Tanner Bruin, Jai Clark, George Stevens. Obviously, yeah, Shawnee Mann is you know, a bit older, but he's come through and has developed really well. Mitch Nevitt's going to be emerging through as a midfielder slash wingman over the course of the next few years. Uh, as, a, as I continue to scroll through this, Jack Bowes is going to be kicking on for a while now. Um, there's, you know, I'm sorry, I'm making sure that I don't miss anyone, you know, be overly disrespectful to anyone. Um, there, there's a great core to our midfield of the next 10 years that's going there. And again, you add Bailey Smith on top of that. Things looking pretty good. I also didn't shout out Ollie Henry in terms of mid-sized forwards. So we're, we're doing really well on the forward line. And then you add our talls being Jeremy Cameron and Shannon Neal. And I don't think we need to be rushing that. I think it's important that we probably get some depth with Tom Hawkins going. Shannon Neal was the depth. And now he is the you know the number two banana behind Jeremy Cameron. So I think we need we need that next person, that next soldier. And I think that'll be part of what we do through the draft. But when I, you know, when I think about where the Cats' needs are in terms of the long term, I think about our defence. We've lost Zach Tui as a rebounding, running, long kicking defender. I'm thinking about Mitch Duncan and how he's been playing more off the half back line, but he's close to retirement now. This will probably be his last season. The fact that it was a one year contract, a bit like Ray Stanley, probably, you know, reminds us that. We're, we're there. The The clock is ticking and we're right near the end. Jake Cole, Jasney and Jed Buse have, have been having, you know, I mean, Jed Buse came into this, the team quite late in the season, did a great job. Je, Jake Cole, Jasney probably had his best season as a cat, but they are on the older side. And we haven't seen as much of the youth kind of emerge in that part of the ground. Of course, we've had the likes of Lawson Humphreys, Sam DeConing as a key defender, but I, I think that's an area that still needs some work. We've, of course, got our the wonderful first-round pickup the last year of Connor O'Sullivan that we've got uh, up our sleeves going forward. But I think it's in that part of the ground that we need a little bit of extra love and TLC because I don't think, I don't think Connor O'Sullivan and Sam DeConing or Jack Henry, I don't think that's enough just yet. And sorry, I, I'm not paying respect to... Uh, uh, to Zach Guthrie, who's been doing an incredible job off the halfback line for a while now as well, um, and who's got plenty of good years ahead of him. It's, I think that's the area that we can look at. And I'm thinking about the fact that Tom Stewart is now spending more time as a midfielder. And I didn't even shout his name out when I was talking about the midfield before. I'm thinking about the fact that he's spending more time as a midfielder these days through necessity, not because he necessarily wants to. But maybe it's that part of the ground that we need to explore a little bit. And so... Cue the player that I'm kind of most thinking of as a as a great pick for Geelong. And I am assuming, for the sake of this, that we are not pushing up the order at all to pick up Dodson here. So just check that increasingly likely scenario, perhaps. 
Um, let's check that one at the door for a second because maybe we could actually make both, make both of these things work. Maybe it's a future first round pick that gets involved with some you know back and forth to to then allow us to make the pick we want and get get Dodson as a ruckman. And we'll talk more about Dodson shortly as well in the in the scenario of Mitch Edwards and Toby Conway and Reese Stanley. The one the player that I think Geelong needs to most go for in this particular draft goes by the name of Lockie Jacques or Jakes. Sorry, Lockie. Um, I haven't actually heard your name pronounced. I've only seen in writing. I've seen the stats. I've seen footage. Um, Lockie Jakes is a, a like a mid one eighties half backman that plays the role of Tom Stewart very well. He's an intercept defender. He gets a lot of the ball. And here's some stats for you, just to kind of paint the picture a little bit uh, from his uh, the, his first three talent league games this season. He was also the Geelong Falcons co-captain. He's a Geelong Falcon, so he's a local product. That's a good thing for us. He averaged 26 disposals, 7.7 intercepts across those first three games. And he, he like what I think impressed me the most from the footage, and admittedly these are highlights, so it makes it kind of hard to really pass through them properly. What impressed me the most is that he had the ability to pick through the game. He, he played very intelligent football. He read the ball well. He could predict the game and where things were going, and and that's what you want to see from a, a really effective intercepting defender and a leader. And he's got those leadership qualities. He's demonstrated that as, as the co-captain at, at the, the Falcons. And I'm really bullish about the idea that he would be a great fit for the team. And if we do think about how that, that defense is going to develop over the next, say, 12 to 24 months, and I'm mindful that Mark Blitzarves is near the near the finishing line as well. And obviously he's played some you know, ro- roles many, of many years in key defensive positions. He's played roles off the um, off the the wing and through the midfield. He's and Connor O'Sullivan's demonstrating a lot of those qualities as well. So we you know build some versatility in. But I think about what we've had to do with our with our defense recently or and where that's going. And I think in the next two years. We're going to lose a. Uh, we're going to lose that versatility potentially of a Mark Blitzarves, or we're going to be very close to it. I mentioned we're going to lose Zach Tui. We're going to lose. Uh, we've sorry, we've lost Zach Tui. We're going to lose Mitch Duncan. Jake Cole Jassing is going to be getting pretty close to the end of that particular uh, point, and he's been doing a really manful job in in the period that Sam DeConing was out, kind of playing much taller than what he actually is. But I presume Sam's going to come back and and play full back and things are going to be looking a bit better there. But think about this kind of defensive unit going forward, where we've got. Sam DeConing and Jack Henry as our two key defenders, or maybe Sam DeConing and Connor O'Sullivan as our two key defenders with Jack Henry now being able to kind of, because he's, he's had to play tall as well over the years and he's been stretched to different points. Um, I, you know, I think about, I mean, it's an iconic game for the Swans, I guess, but like when, when Buddy got the 1000 and like, I mean, there was, mo- there was a momentum there that was hard to stop, but Jack Henry just couldn't reach physically reach the heights that Buddy was getting to, and Buddy had lost a lot of his spring. There's, there's just a, there's just a lack of height that Jack has that kind of works against him somewhat. And so I, I'm really bullish about Lockie Jakes coming in and being that kind of half, half back flanker, back pocket, that intercepting defender alongside. And think about this defense: Sam DeConing, Connor O'Sullivan, Jack Henry, Zach Guthrie. I've lost count of how many players I've got here, but you know, say a Jed Buse as a, a small or a, or a Lawson Humphreys because you know Jed's kind of maybe getting close to the end as well, just like um, just like Jake Cole Jasney. And suddenly we're talking about that's a pretty, especially if their their development matches the the raw talent that they've got. We're talking about a very potent half, you know, defensive unit there that's going to win more contests than it doesn't. That's exciting. And so I think that is kind of the, the role that we need to target the most is kind of that, that look at that defensive unit. If there is an amazing key defender, go for them. But Lockie Jakes, I think, is the I think he's the the prototype of what we want to be as a as a team. He he intercepts, he rebounds, he's got speed, he's intelligent in the way he plays, he's still accountable defensively. They're all the qualities you want from a really good defender. And I, I think he's going to be a great fit for the Cats. We then, you know, segue from that, and we of course need to then revisit the Alex Dodson conversation and the fact that he's he's being positioned as our, you know, Max Holmes for the year. And oh my God, I haven't mentioned Max Holmes in the midfield or in the defensive unit. Sorry for everyone who's been screaming in the comments up to this point. Max Holmes, I completely forgot. Um, 
oh my god we've got so many gifts this is the, the I, I think alex dodson could be a huge piece of this puzzle as well and i spoke about this in the video yesterday toby conway is your more traditional slower very tap focused ruckman but alex dodson is someone who can ruck and you know gets gets plenty of hit outs but also can run the ground a lot more he's a bit more athletic than toby conway not necessarily like not excessively so but maybe put him more in line with like a Brody grundy who can you know he's not he's not lightning across the ground in fact most midfielders will still chase Brody grundy down but like Brody Grund- Brody Grund- grundy can run um much better than most ruckman not as much as ray stanley ray stanley's far more of an athlete but then you know this there's, there's give and take the sacrifices i think he fits the Brody grundy mold which is this beautiful hybrid and he's about 201 202 centimeters already so i think i think he'd be a great pick as well my dream scenario here is that we we do in fact sacrifice a first round pick trade in get ourselves alex dodson then come pick 45 which is going to come in keep that in mind it's going to come in because of all of the um academy bids father son bids and all the picks that get soaked up to make that happen we kind of push back initially as brisbane and some of those other teams jump in and then we slide then we come back in as all these picks get soaked up for the academy so those picks are going to come in we're going to get the opportunities a little bit earlier and you know i think those are the two that we want to build our draft around i'll be watching very keenly to see if that's the case and then from that you can get i think that's when you start looking at your midfielders and and looking what we can do there because we do have the depth. So right now, in terms of in terms of futures for the midfield, we're looking to just you know, we can get a bit more speculative. We can we can let Stephen Wells do what he does well and find a diamond in the rough, and that's my hope. Anyway, let me know what you think about Geelong's draft strategy going into Wednesday slash Thursday nights. Make sure to tune in with us. We're going to be watching the the draft and discussing it in a live stream. Myself and Ben will do a whole range of different bits and pieces around the draft, so stay tuned for all of that. But otherwise, make sure to check out all of our content on the Hoops Crew. Thank you very much for watching. Go to the Patreon where you can subscribe, get early access to a whole range of content. We've got exclusives, early access, uh, extended content. There's some awesome stuff there around the AFL men's team, around the women's team. Thank you to everyone who became a patron over the course of season 2024, and we only plan to get bigger throughout season 2025 and provide you more for your buck on socials you can find me at paul james games check out the hoops crew on socials as well basically every single platform known to man ben has set up an account there go check it out and until tomorrow now for draft night thanks a lot for watching and i'll see you later remain along strong everyone